onto something, not only just for the macro idea of investing as a whole, but also kind of on that micro um, side of making investing more fun and collaborative, not only for people doing it, but also people that haven't started yet. Uh, social is a big thing. Uh, I grew up, I'm 25. Literally, I, I don't know. You haven't I grown up shit. yet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, trust I, I, me. I've grown up with social. I it, see some crazy. whiskers. I see some whiskers. Yeah, there right? might be a gray in there. Yep. <laughs> when this starts happening and it just like, it, it just spreads uh, <laughs> a lot could, of time. Uh, uh, I'm at, I mean, with the technology going on and me forgetting my passwords, I'm about to lose it all. <laughs> so, but that's the real it, deal. It goes to show you, though, it's like, what do you not share these days? It's like, I share my workouts on Strava, I share my diets on these other apps, I share photos of me, photos of other people, TikTok now, you know, you're sharing your daily routine. The one thing that I never really shared in a more efe- efe- uh, efficient and effective way was um, finances. Yeah. Cause I think there was this, you know, people don't like sharing it. It doesn't make sense. People don't want to know people's money. It's like, okay, I get all that, but what they do, that's the, but thing. they do <laughs> but they exactly. Do. <laughs> but they, I mean, lost porn and gain porn is a reason. There's a reason yeah. for it on wall street bets. Cause it's, it's fun. And, yeah. um, we think that there's a revolution kind of happening. Well, there already is a revolution. So we don't even think that anymore, but more in the sense that, uh, the shifting of the management of money of, you know, what the stock market is to the American society. We think it's going from the elites on wall street and more and more towards the brilliant people on main street, you know, the, the roaring kitties. It's, there's a lot of smart people out there that know what they're doing as well as the people on wall street. But why is it only wall street people that get the, you know, the smart money, the, this and that, and we get, you know, there's hedge funds and everything, but, uh, Main Street smarter than people think, and we're on a mission to not only find those people, but also bring them to light so that the rest of, you know, retail investing community as a whole can follow those guys to see how, how to do it themselves. So like, I, I don't want to turn this into a, a whole thing where I shit on hedge funds and Wall Street, because to be honest with you, uh, I, I'm partnered with a lot of them. I take money from a lot of folks there. I actually don't think it's about Wall Street and hedge funds and the big rich elite. I think it's the same thing could be this same argument could be said uh, in education. It can be said in healthcare. Uh, it can yeah. be said in insurance. It can be said in all these major industries. And really, you talk, we, we should have recorded the beginning of the show. We were getting to know each other before you came on. We talked about tech and just like what a pain in the fucking ass it is. Yeah. You know what the reality is? The, the differentiator between Main Street and Wall Street and education at colleges and hospitals and, you know, so on and so on and so on is that main street adopts tech faster and they know how to use it. And so like you look at roaring kitty and you look at these, these, these people in particular athletes, pro athletes and musicians and artists who pop up NFTs like that. Yeah. Gary V they're nimble. They're flexible. They're quick. They understand the tech. There's no barrier. They see an opportunity and they, bam, they jump on it. The other ones have to jump over 52 hoops called nine lawyers, an accountant, their wife, their mistress, and everybody in between. And it all just, it just is a fucking mess. And that doesn't even go into like the, the inflation talk and the printing cash and the whole fiat yeah, is cash is trash and all this stuff. This is all going on because technology, you know, to the point you made before the show has like hit this gear. We all been sitting on our asses at home and like, tech just like, woof. And then you threw digital and the fact we're doing this via zoom, I don't, I'm in Chicago. I don't know where you're at, but yeah. um, you know, it's, it's like, it just, it narrowed the gap really quickly. Oh, it, it expedited it by five years. It yeah. Easily, right. You know? So it's like, I, I look at, I look at where we are and I'm like, you know, you're right. Honestly, like you could see the, you know, crypto. And obviously, if you know my history, I've been, you know, working towards democratizing investing since 2012, but like 2015, mm-hmm. really, uh, with equity crowdfunding and and all this stuff, crypto kind of pushed it forward. Title Title Nine kind of Title Five put, pushed it forward. You know, all these things kind of moved it. Prior to COVID, and I'm not exactly sure when you guys started Iris, but prior to COVID, I feel like there there was this like, okay, let's talk about our money a little bit. Like, let's share. Who knows what? Like, you know, crypto. I don't know crypto. Tell me about it. Like, this was happening. Then it became the like soup du jour. And now I think Iris is one of the smartest fucking apps I have seen yet. And in fact, I found it from Robin Hood kid on Twitter yeah. at Robin Hood kid. She's yeah. awesome. By the way, she's coming on the show next. Um, oh, really? Yeah. I was actually just texting her. 
Yeah. Really so like, <laughs> so I, I didn't realize I'm really good friends with that guy, guys from Tasty Trade. And yeah. we used to call on the show all the time. And I saw her on this thing and her and ba- Tony Bats are going at it back and forth on Twitter. And I'm like, whoa, 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 how the fuck? And then I clicked on her link tree and I see Iris and I'm like, what is this? And I started, I downloaded, obviously I started jumping on it. I did call my friends, Brian, if anyone's listening, this, the show is sponsored by M1. Brian Barnes is the CEO of M1. I have texted this fucking guy. We need an API into Iris. I need M1 yeah. <laughs> on Iris if you're listening. But aside from that, um, it's just, it's so smart. And it, it does, ex- it like, I want to make this really obvious for people who are listening to this. If you are on Twitter, which you probably are if you're listening to this, if you're on Twitter and you follow Vlad and Barstool, you know, DDDT, and you're like into all this stuff, right? Iris is right in the middle where you talk about the investing stuff, but you can't bullshit because your numbers are sitting there. It's not your actual money, but your bet points are up or down or right in front of you. So all these people who are like diamond hands, but they fucking sell out immediately. Yeah, like you can't do exactly. that. Exactly. And that is it, the genius behind this app. It's you got to walk. If you're going to talk the talk, you got to walk the walk. It's, you know, the inspiration come from, came from honestly just group chats. And it's kind of yeah. similar to that when back in college, you know, we're all in these group chats talking about stocks. Um, this was even pre COVID uh, back in 2015, 2016, but you kind of had two major people in those group chats that I'm sure everyone had, you would have that one kid that would tell you buy this, buy this, buy this. And then it'd be like, no, screw you. Like, I know you're not good. I can't yeah. prove that you're not good, but stop telling me your stocks. And then you have that other guy though. That's really good. He's probably the one more quiet, not really telling you. And then you go to him. It's like, yo, stop making trades without telling me. It's like, I want to do the trades that you do because you know what you're doing. This other dude doesn't. He's the one kind of talking all the time, but I want to know what you do. So when we thought of that, it's like, well, everyone's sending screenshots. Everyone's, you know, talking about I'm buying this and selling this. It's like, why isn't there an app that kind of solves that issue and just makes it easier? You know, it's just an app that allows you to connect your broker. You could follow your friend's trades. You could follow influencers trades. You could follow these smart people's trades and you can get real-time trade notifications the minute they make the trade. It's like, why is that not a thing yet? Um, it, so we thought it was an inevitable kind of idea. We know how to build it. We're, we're building it for people like ourselves. So we said, you know, fuck it, let's just do it ourselves. And to your Twitter point, it's so true. I, I can't tell you how many times, you know, it, Twitter just becomes toxic because there's no trust and there's no trust because there's no transparency in the finance world. Yeah. You know, you see the, the Pura Saxinas versus, um, I think Chris Peruna, there's a huge beef that goes on between them. Yeah. And it's like, guys, just literally show your portfolio, you know, just what's the show your cards so show your cards. that's why literally. i only follow parody accounts at this point like that uh, i actually yeah, pay that, attention to that's it i'm i'm it, here for exactly. greg <laughs> that's it. yeah yeah the greg dot right yeah and kayla i mean greg kayla freak patel they're all they're all on, they're all onto something um yeah. and the memes are the main thing so when we first launched uh we made it um my first thing to do was i'm the head of growth is to go after the meme pages on instagram it's like, why? You know, people are like, what do you mean? Why would you go after the meme pages? It's like, because the memes is where the attention is. And that's where the good vibes, the positive kind of feel of everything. That's is. where the actual news is coming from. Exactly. Like yeah, AMC like and, and yeah. GameStop, all this stuff is all actually like the, the it's funny. This is so funny because it's true. We've gone, we've evolved and devolved and evolved and devolved and evolved and evolved so much so now that we've gone all the way back to where in the newspaper, the truth was always in the silly section. It was always the comics. It was the comedian yep. on stage. Who's telling you the truth, but like wrapping it in a joke. That's memes. That's the parody accounts. They're telling you the fucking truth right to your face, but they wrap it in a joke because you know, it's uh Kenny lay and he's telling you how Enron stock is fire. But he's exactly. actually telling you like, this is, <laughs> this is a scam. He's that's, that's the, the joke is on you. Um, and- yeah, it's and brilliant. you know what's what's the biggest parody of them all? Literally, Wall Street bets. Like that oh, alone, yeah. yeah, it just summarizes everything. It's you don't have to take finance so seriously. Robinhood changed the game in the sense that they brought finance to everyone. But yeah. I think people underestimate when they're saying like, "Oh, you know, AMC is not healthy because people are going to lose all their money." It's like, no, they're not. You know, Robinhood's average account is like five thousand dollars like we we see the numbers we have a ton of data and we can see this stuff these people 
everyone has a Robin Hood that they have, you know, literally quote unquote meme accounts or YOLO accounts for that stuff. And then they pair that with their, you know, M1 finance or their, their fidelities, their TD Ameritrades yep. for their more Roth IRA, their legit stuff. Yeah. They're There's not betting wrong. their whole future on yeah, fucking it, GameStop. It's, it's ridiculous. That narrative is just, it's just so dumb. I, I mean, all of my friends, me personally, I have my long-term portfolio of fidelity and I got my fund of portfolio where I trade my options in my Robin. Do I know that Robinhood's like, I, I don't expect to make 6% a year on Robinhood. I expect to make 50% or down 50%. And I'm fine with that. And I expect that. Uh, but on my fidelity, that's where I'm kind of, I don't, I don't do options and whatnot. But it's there's all nothing loaded wrong up on Dogecoin. That. It's fidelity. Yeah, it's, all, I mean, it's all Dogecoin. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. Dogecoin AMC. It, it, it's, yeah. it's funny though, too. You could see the data. So we have a little analytics tab on our, on our app. And Dogecoin, GameStop, and AMC are the three largest held positions out of the connected portfolios we have. Yep. And it's because people are just up so much. You know, they're yeah. up 80, 90, 100%. There's nothing wrong with that. I just don't understand the narrative of people saying this is unhealthy for the newer investor because they're going to lose all their money. It's just not true. If you start investing, you're not going to leave. I mean, from everyone that we see, that we speak to, we speak to thousands of users. Um, we have a pretty good relationship with a lot of the people. We speak to them pretty actively. A lot of these people are from the GameStop era, you know, GameStop yeah. 1.0, I call it. Uh, Funko Land? Leave. You mean yeah. Funko Land? That's Funko the original Land. GameStop. Oh, that was that was unbelievable. That that what was that? End of January, early February. It was yeah. that one. It was the euphoria. <laughs> it was crazy. Um, but a lot of people started, and now what we we're excited about Iris is because like you can have that fun, that collaborative, that that banter element. But now once we bring on these more professionals, you know, there's a lot of professionals on TikTok that people don't know of. There's a lot of people on Seeking Alpha. Where you can have follow your friends, but now you can follow these professionals and actually learn quality trading strategies, learn, get more comfortable while still having fun with your friends. Because I think you need both of them. You can't have one or the other or else if you only have the fun, they're eventually going to weed out because they're going to be like, I can't make any money. Screw this. And you can't have just the professional because it's like, I don't want to read eight page stock memos. I'd rather just yeah. have them, you know, just show me and you can pair it together. So that's what we're we're starting to do at Iris. We have some longer term vision and longer term plans, but with the ability to get notified of when your friend makes a trade and to know how much money they're up or down on that trade is something that is long overdue. Um, and that's what we have so far. And we're excited uh, with that, frankly. Yeah, it's it's a great product. You know, I think you've taught you've touched on a couple of things here that I think are worth mentioning. Um, you know, the first thing you should talk about friends and the social component, this is main street's version of the power lunch. Like yeah. Yeah. The, the big, big dudes and honchos out in, in the wall street, go fly wherever the fuck they fly to. And they have a big meeting and they all decide like my 14 billion is going to swing here. Where's your 1 billion going to go. And it, you know, it's the same thing. Yeah. This is just done the way that main street does it. So I, I totally agree with you on that. And I think it's just like the way it is. The other part I think you mentioned that, I, that is, particularly interesting to me is the democratization component. Like, yes, Robin hood kind of opened the door. Investors are, are going to lose some money. And they like to have this narrative that like, Oh, the, the poor, stupid retail investor, they're, they're all going to lose their houses. And the funny thing is if you go to get an MBA, you go to, you know, any of the top schools, Chicago, whatever, Northwestern, wherever you go, uh, I guess Harvard is probably up there too. Yeah. Um, if you go to these schools, the first thing that any seasoned investor is going to tell you is you got to lose money first. You got to put money in the game and lose it to feel the ride. And if it, if it hurts too much, then you should not be in this business. And if it feels too good, you should probably shouldn't be in this business like a drug addict. And if it's somewhere in the middle and you get it, then this is here, you can learn. So how come it's okay for them to, to feel the pinch? And then that's like learning process, but over here you can't. And I just think that this narrative um, it, it makes perfect sense. I got, I'm sponsored by banks and shit my whole life. So like, I'm, I'm friends with bankers. Like I don't have any issues. Uh, I would never give them my money. I invest my own money. Like I'm sure I at some point would give it to somebody to watch if I had enough. But for me, it's like, I, it's enough that I can manage it. I, I deal. Yeah. The thing that is, I think interesting is between the robo investing apps and the tech that's built with M1, the power that Robinhood gives you. And if you want to go to tasty trade or fidelity or wherever else you want to do uh, for longer, bigger trades, more complex trades, you know, by all means do that. 
it takes the power away from individual financial advisors. It takes the power away from these bankers that have basically held on to Y charts and to Bloomberg terminals. And you can't see this information. And now everyone's like, dude, it's on Twitter in eight milliseconds. And I already like, what are we talking about? And I I think it's a fear driven thing. They don't want to see the whole thing, you know, kind of go away. And at the same time, you got crypto chasing up their back. And so it's like, like, now is not a great time to be an IB. Like that's no. what I'm saying. <laughs> no, it, it, it's, it's interesting. I mean, if you take that first point, like the question we always ask are, uh, we work with a lot of influencers. We know a ton of them um, across TikTok, YouTube, you know, you name it. The question is like, who wants to be the next Jim Cramer? Who wants to be no. the Jim Cramer for the Gen Z, for the millennial? You know, they're not watching CNBC or Mad Money. They're on YouTube. No. They're on TikTok. Who's going to do that? There's a lot of people doing it very well already. So we're excited with kind of with where that movement is, but there's going to be a void in that market that can talk to these newer investors because it works. You know, people do, do want to know about it. And on the, the point of the, the hedge funds, you know, the bankers, it's, it's not like we like them too. We understand yeah. that they're very necessary. There's nothing wrong with kind of the way that they do it. it it's more of the, the newer investors, they just want to be comfortable. And it's easy, obviously, to have a villain. You know, it's, you know, who are you going to go after? You're just going to go after the rich people. Like, that's an well, easy yeah. villain to do. That's, it is. Uh-huh. But like the the hedge fund part of this, though, I I love it. I like, I follow Code 2 like crazy on M1. Like, thank you. You guys have made yeah. me a lot of money. Like, I have zero qualm with what's going on there. My issue, honestly, isn't an even issue. It's just a, it's, it's just like working around a, a fact, right? Because, the main street investors are pissing in the wall street investors pool. That's what's yep. going on. Like yep. everything was going just hunky dory. And we had our shorts on GameStop and on AMC because they haven't made money in well ever, but in the last 15 months, it's been terrible. So like it's the most obvious bet in wall street. And then yep. you guys came along and took a shit in my pond. And now I can't do everything. business as usual. And so like, that's where the, that's the only and, reason that there's a disconnect. And that's why though, too, with, with regards to kind of what we're in the business for, it's, you know, you have the hedge funds, they, they have all the, the analytics, they have the data, no one's ever going to be able to compete on that level. Yeah. But, and then you have the Robin Hood who's like, hey, we're not in the business of educating or in, informing you, we're just in the business of giving you the, the ability to do it. So yeah. when you kind of take that example of them pissing in the pool, it's, Okay, like why don't you just now, if they're gonna come anyway, because Robin Hood broke down the, the fence to get to that pool, you might as well help them to make sure that they're not pissing in the pool. They can kind of help that pool flourish. How do you do that? You do it through uh, information. Yeah. Uh, and that's what, with Iris, you know, we're not in the business of educating, but we're in the business of providing information, not only on the micro scale, but also on the macro scale of people to follow. So, what do I mean by that? What I mean is when you have Robin Hood, You know, what do people know about their portfolio? They don't know. They know what they own and they know how much they're up and down. You know, they don't know how much money they've made on equities versus call options versus puts versus crypto, you know, the beta of their their portfolio, the alpha. What what does that stuff even mean? Yes, there's tools out there, but, you know, for the everyday person, they they just want to trade on Robinhood. Yeah. Now, the other thing, though, too, is what Iris can do is we, we break that down. So if you connect your portfolio, you see if you're up a thousand dollars, you know how much you're up in equities versus options that now can start educating the person because you can see it's like, OK, I'm killing it with stocks and crypto, but I'm horrible at options. Maybe I should stop trading options. So therefore, you know, he's becoming a better investor. He's becoming more informed and he's not pissing in the pool as much. The yeah. other side of that too, though, is you can follow these smarter people. So it's like these guys on Wall Street, it's like, hey, stop pissing in the pool. It's like, hey, join Iris so we can start, you know, learning from you. You know, if you want this to be better, you know, I get it's a, there's, they clash because one person's buying, one person's selling. Well, it's, it's only, more, the, like, it's only that way. Like, I think it's, I, I agree with everything you're saying. Like, I think Iris has a, a great position. I love the app. Like it has a great position to, to solve her. I actually it's like two people. It's like a couple that have been together forever fighting with each other about words, but they're using different words that they're, they're on the same page. Yeah. Literally wall street's problem is that these guys don't know what the hell they're doing. And they're just like picking meme stops. Cause they're funny. And they're just like writing them up. 
and there's some smarter people like Hello Kitty and the rest are Hello Kitty. Jesus, I just called him. Yeah. I just called him Hello Kitty. <laughs> I <laughs> Rory, sorry, <laughs> Roaring, Roaring Kitty. Roaring that Kitty. <laughs> actually know what they're doing, and can sort of drive the mob, if you will, in a certain direction. The reality is, this is the first time, and it's not the first time that something like this happened. There's been manipulation in different ways from media, but this is the first time it's happened this way. And I, I yeah. think you're just going to start to see these like Wall Street hedge funds and groups just they're going to have to learn. They're just going to have to learn yeah. to, to figure it out. Because you know what? Retailer guys are going to get pinched. And some did in the early AMC run. They're going to get pinched. They're going to have, you're going to lose money. All basically, if I'm, if I'm Wall Street, all I heard was I better keep my head on a swivel. I yeah. better not put calls out there and just like mail yeah. it, to, mail it out. Cause someone's going to show up and eat my lunch. And that's competition and competition is good for capitalism. And that ultimately is good for the economy and growth and forces everyone up. I'm good for it. I actually think this is just a, a wrinkle that will actually work out really well. It might kill the economy for a minute, but like it will work out really well because you're going to have, you said you're what, 25? Yeah. You're going to have 16 year olds to 30 with more financial literacy than 50 year olds. Yeah. A long shot. And that is awesome. I'm just like, I'm so, and that, that I think is the one thing about Iris that I got so excited about. I looked at this and I was like, holy shit. Any of my friends who are like, I want to learn how to trade. I'm not the guy to tell you. You're maybe you're, maybe you are, maybe you're not the guy to tell them either. I would just say, download the Iris app, follow me and follow five or six other people and just watch this shit come in and out. If it doesn't make any sense to you, then it's probably, you should probably go to like a robo advisor and take a little, you know, like, and that it, to me is brilliant. Yeah. It, it's, it's actively, I don't know what the term is. We, I feel like someone's got to coin it, but it's like actively managing your money through passively watching other people do it. If that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. No, right? that, like, that's a great way to put it. I don't know what the word is either, wanna, but that's a great way to put it. Yeah. You don't like robo advisors, you know, it's like, I can buy this spy, you know, yeah. I want to, I want to be in names that I care about. I want to be in names. You know, I, I, I eat at Chipotle three times a week. Like, yeah, I'll probably own Chipotle. I love Tesla. I own a Tesla. I want to, I want, yeah. I want to get Nike. And I think Tesla like, bought my house. Fund. So I'm good with Tesla. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've been trying to buy a Tesla literally. I can't, the, uh, the used car prices are through the roof. Oh, uh, dude, like, oh. lease, 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 I know, lease the Tesla. I know, but I'm in. I'm out in California. Um, oh yeah, never mind. I'm, I'm trying yeah. to figure out uh, just that tax situation yeah. to begin with. I don't know if I'm going to get taxed twenty percent or eighty percent. Move, but, um, move to Miami like everybody else, and then go know, rent in my and go we, rent in California. And call we it we set up we set up shop in Santa Monica, so I'm on the beach. I do like surfing yeah. and all that, but you're uh, doing good. You're good. Yeah, I'll be all right. There's, I'm not complaining. I came from Boston. It was a little bit colder up there. But also to, to your point, though, of the uh, the hedge fund thing that that I personally get excited about, and it actually works out well because AMC literally just did this, was when hedge funds think about the situations like, OK, a lot of retail investors are coming into the play. Yes, they're bringing money, which props up everyone, but also they're bringing influence. You know, yeah. the retail investor now, he not only is buying shoes from Nike, he's also buying the stock of Nike. 80% of AMC's outstanding shares, I think, were owned by retail investors. So what does the CEO does? He's like, okay, 80% of our owners of our company are retail guys. Let's give some rewards to the guys owning our stock so they'll stay in the stock longer. I think that's going to start happening more and more where if you're Nike and you see that 30% of your, of your outstanding shares are owned by retail, like let's actually incentivize more consumers to own our stock. Because that helps me. I'm the CEO. That helps the hedge funds because they own Nike. And it helps the retail investor because now they're getting involved in the stock market. I think it's a win-win-win across the board. And that shift towards retail investing, it brings power, more purchasing power because it, it's a feedback loop. And yeah. I can see that happening more and more over the next few years, especially for those consumer-facing apps or those consumer facing brands, excuse me, um, in the apps as well, you know, Instagrams, you know, they have, a, they have, they have so much money. They don't know what to do with. figure out a way to incentivize your current shareholders in the retail investing community to continue holding your stock. And I think that's where the real winners will end up in the long run. And then the hedge funds are going to love that. So I think yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more with you. And I, I, I just think like, you know, there's such a, I don't know how to put this. It's like, they're, Business, you know, everything is different, but the same, you know what I mean? Like this history just sort of repeats itself. Businesses now 
are a little closer to the ground, if that makes sense. Like they used to be all the way up in the sky rise and you didn't know who the hell they were as Ford and GM and GE and, you know, and now it's like Tesla and here's Elon like chasing around Greg on Twitter, just like me, you know? <laughs> so true. And, and it's like, I know that I, I don't know him, but I do. He's a nut, but I, you know, like the, like Vlad, when in history could you like see Vlad making his lines and, and like tweeting, like, and being accountable ish to like what's going on. And like right there, that, that like changes the game to where like, now you want to invest in companies. You're like, I know the founder. I see what's going on. I, I believe in that company. I believe in that tech. It, it, I think it, there's, it's kind of weird to be honest that there's like a lot of equity crowdfundingness components to this, like with retail investors now being more involved on Robin and so forth. Like they're taking kind of the, the like, I'm going to start buying Nike shoes. Yeah. I own Nike stock. Like I, there's, there's a, there's a whole yeah. thing that's changed in the way that everyone just views the the relationship, which is cool. It, it, it's true. And I mean, I think it's going to bleed into earnings calls. It's going to bleed into rewards programs. It's going to bleed into, you know, everything, even like Macy's. Imagine if Macy's, you know, two years ago, their stock's going through the shitter right now because yeah. they just retail. It's like, how do you turn yourself into a little bit more of a technology and more consumer facing product? Imagine making your rewards program, giving you stock. Yeah. You know, it's like I, every time I go there and I try and I was trying to buy a watch the other day, it's like they just hit you with their credit card, credit card, credit card. It's like I get that, but come up with a way to give me stock so that when I, I shop there, uh, I can get stock. And there's some apps out there that do that. Um, there's a couple that are coming. Um, one is called Griffin, which is a brilliant idea. Uh, they they kind of do that. And I, I think that it will just attest to the more people you can get in the market, the better it is across the board. You know, when you work out, you're sore for the first three days and then yeah. you're fine. When you're investing in the stock market, you can lose money for the first three days and then you'll be fine. You'll eventually learn, you'll get over it. You know, it'll hit you in the gut and you'll suck it up. You know, it's, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and I think we're moving more and more towards that. And, you know, whether it's Iris, whether it's another app out there that does it, we're, we're just passionate about empowering the retail investor and giving them like a seat on the table or at least a place to feel like they have a seat in the table so that they can comfortably do this um, and get more and more engaged. Because also to, uh, another point is, um, and I, I mean, there's so much to talk about this on crypto, yeah. but a, a, another thing though that I like to talk about is um, like a, there's a lot of um, people that don't invest that want to invest, but don't have the time or don't have the, the energy to do it. Like I, back in college, my girlfriend, I told her, it's like, yeah, you should invest in the stock market. She's like, I, I don't care. I don't want to learn it, but I get it. It's like, I'll just give you two grand to do it for me. And so I think there's a lot of people out there that have that stuff that, you know, yes, you could use a robo advisor, but it'd be a lot cooler if she could do that on Iris, follow me, get trained notifications, kind of do what I do, follow you, follow these professionals. Yep. And she's gaining exposure to it all without actually having to do some, you know, there's not that much mental effort to it. It's just trained notifications is just passively scrolling, just like you're scrolling on TikTok. So th that's the world we're building towards. I I'm a fan of the world. Uh, I hope everyone who's listening checks it out. It's uh, is it just Iris financial for the app store? Yeah, it's just called yeah. Iris finance. Um, there's a dating app above us. We're not there yet. Maybe we'll turn it into a sugar daddy app, but <laughs> Hey, you know what? There are worse things that could happen. You could post yeah. dude could post his actual profile and how much money he's got in his portfolio. And then you can hook up on that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We got a couple guys that are flexing. I mean, even this morning I woke up and it was 6,500% return for this one girl on an AMC call. Jesus. And I'm just, another guy I'm, I was watching, um, his name is Logan Weaver. We work with him well. He's an awesome dude. Uh, just some random guy that downloaded the app. Was, uh, he was up, I think, 6,000, 7,000% on Dogecoin, which turned his portfolio literally into, you know, multiple multiple yeah. thousands i don't know yeah. exactly how much money but people are making money out there um and it's exciting to see it's just make sure that you're not in the the back the back end of the trade so profits is always cool because there's always going to be another one yeah no i i dig it thank you so much for taking the time to join us all right awesome man have a good one